What's up everybody, Dr. Craig Ingstrom here, but you can just call me Craig. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to create this outline effect or the shadow effect that you see here with this image. And also I'm going to show you how to create the outline effect or border effect that you see on this image. It's a very popular thing to do with YouTube thumbnails. And essentially I created this YouTube thumbnail that you see here, sent it to some folks to get their feedback and impressions, something you should always do to improve your click-through rate. Before posting a video, get input on your thumbnail if possible. One of the people I sent it to said, hey, how do you create that effect in Canva? Of course, in Illustrator and more high-end programs, you can create those border effects using tools, but Canva does not really have that. So this is how you're going to do it. You're going to essentially create two images and layer one image on top of the other, doing some adjusting effects and filters. I'll show you how to do that in just a moment. On this channel, I am all about helping you improve your communication to people. So click that like button, follow me on this channel if you're interested in seeing more videos like this or just learning how to be a better communicator in general. Probably the easiest thing to do is just for me to create a new page here and walk you through the steps. I'm gonna go over to photos. And what I did is I found this photo, I thought it looked pretty good for creating this vision I had. And all I'm going to do now is go to effects, remove background. Once the background is removed, if there's anything else that I want to restore or remove, I can do that. I can see here there's this little like Z looking thing and I wanna get rid of that. So what I'm going to do is kind of zoom in. Let's go to 75% here. That should be doable. I'm going to go to erase. And then I'm going to need to change the brush size because that's obviously too large. So I'll just drag this down a little bit, get that a little bit smaller. And then I'm just going to kind of erase this looking little, little Z thing here. There we go. I think that looks pretty good. I mean, I don't has, it doesn't have to be perfect by any means. Click done. I'm going to zoom back out to 50%, just make it look a little better or easier for me to work with here. What I did is I said, okay, I want it approximately there. I want it to be a larger size. Now there's a lot of image here. So one thing I can do is also crop. I wanna get rid of a lot of these elements here. Just bring it in. Maybe even crop from the back a little bit cause I'm not gonna need as much image. Just makes it easier to work with. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is to make a copy of this image. You can right click and do copy, or you can control C or command C, control V to create a backup image of that. You want to make sure that it is aligned. Okay, and then what you're going to do is just enlarge it a little bit. So that way it's easier to work with once you have it changed and you want to send it back and forth or make some minor adjustments. What I'm going to do now is go to effects and I can change it immediately. I like to use this duo tone for this one. That's what I use. I'm going to click on duo tone, give it just a little bit of a red color. That's what I was looking for because I wanted it to match ultimately the colors that I had here. I'm going to then go to adjust. And what I can do is now just sort of play with these elements. And in this case, I went with zero here, but you, if you wanted to, you could drag this up, make it brighter, make it less bright, but I really wanted as much red kind of effect as I could. I then went to contrast to give it an even more red color. You can go as high as you want. Let's just go to like say 60 here, or you can just type it in either way. That looks pretty good. Saturation, I didn't really want to change any of that, but of course you could, because again, I'm going for that sort of red color. For tint, of course, I'm gonna go for red. So I'm gonna drop down over here, make it even a little bit more red. I think I had it around like 70 or something like that. Let's just leave it there. Come down to blur. I wanna have a blurred effect. So I'm gonna just blur it out. I think I set it to something like around 50 on this one. Just started looking, really giving me that sort of look that I wanted. I didn't change the X process or vignette at all, leaving it as such and then click on that. Now I'm just going to go to position, send it backwards, and you can see we have some similar effect. Of course, I can make minor adjustments as needed for these items by sending it frontwards and backwards, making adjustments to the color as I want. Okay, so let's go over here and see how I created this one. I had an image of the speaker, brought it in, I removed the background, and then basically created a copy of the copy here. I'm going to send that backwards just to show you what I did for the setup. I went to adjust, and I cranked the brightness up to 100, contrast up to 100, saturation down, and that gave me a complete white line. I made it a little larger and then sent it backwards. And then I just sort of moved around using my arrow keys on my keypad, 
where I would want to position Pui or Dr. PCK here. And there you go, um, creates that effect very nicely. So I hope that you found this video helpful. If you stuck around this long, you probably did. So hit that like button so that YouTube knows to put it in front of other people. Leave a comment if you have ideas for videos that you'd like me to cover in the future. And until the next video, I hope you have a wonderful day.